Hi, everybody! Today, we will continue our journey to the world of petrified wood. We have a bunch of new specimens to examine. Exhibit number one is an easily recognizable type of petrified wood, often called terreto board wood. Large oval structures represent cross sections of burrows. The creatures that made the burrows are wood eating saltwater clams called terreto worms. These are bivalve mollusks that have elongated soft bodies resembling worms. In the process of devouring underwater logs, they create tunnels inside of the wood. The tunnels eventually become filled with a fine grain sediment. In the case of this rock, it was a mix of radiolarian shells made of silica. The light color of the sediment, shape, and size of the oval structures brings about the visual association to peanuts. Hence the name peanut wood, applied to the petrified wood found in Western Australia. The peanut wood comes from Wendalia formation of the Lower Cretaceous period, estimated 122 to 112 million years old. This type of petrified wood is a jewelry grade lapidary material, and it is often made into cabochons with original patterns. Kennedy Range is a well-known mining location and a probable origin for this specimen. The Toretto worms, by the way, can be found in coastal mangrove forests. People living on the river island of Marajo in Brazil search for the worm-infested trunks during low tide, split those trunks to extract mollusks, and eat the mollusks essentially raw after cleaning and adding lemon juice. They call mollusks turu. In the Philippines, the Toretto worm is a local delicacy under the name of tamilok. At the time when ships were made of wood, Toretto worms were a serious problem. They've got nicknamed shipworm for their role in destroying the vessels. Christopher Columbus and Sir Francis Drake both experienced shipworm-associated disasters. Looking at the white spots of the fossil under the microscope, we did observe several structures similar to the foraminifera shells. I wonder what else could be trapped in those holes with sediment. The brown areas have distinct bundles of plant vessels. The peanut wood could be attributed to different trees. Our best guess is conifer, perhaps from genus Podocarpus. With smooth, creamy white edges, this rock looks and feels like a piece of Tehran, a nougat confection filled with roasted almonds. Shall we call it candy rock? Anyway, let's move on to another fossil, Tempska fern from Northern America. We generally avoid buying unpolished petrified wood, but could not pass up this opportunity due to the scarcity of the material. We tried to polish the slab a bit with 1000 and 1500 grit sandpaper, but honestly, it did not improve the situation. It has been established that Tempska ferns grew in the forests of the early Cretaceous period. Although radiometric dating suggests that the specimens from Cedar Mountain formation, for example, are 97 million years old, which extends the timeline to the Cenomanian Age, an early part of the late Cretaceous. Even unpolished, the slab produced interesting fluorescent images with a variety of patterns. The cut is quite thin, and light can be seen shining through what used to be plant vessels, currently filled with semi-transparent silica minerals. Here's another Tempska specimen. Different color, which depends on the mineral composition of surrounding sediments. Based on the coloration, this piece is probably coming from Greenhorn Mountain, Oregon, while previous darker piece looks like those found near Blanding, Utah. The false trunks of these tree ferns consist of several hundreds of intertwined stems and petioles. The diameter of the trunks, up to half a meter, suggests that the plants might reach heights of six meters. Although, considering how the morphology resembles the one of palm trees, I think the Tempska firms could be taller. The size of petioles is tiny, implying that the fronds sticking out of the false trunks were kind of small. There are several species described for the Tempska family, but they may represent different developmental stages or various levels of the same trunk. In paleobotany, it is a common situation due to the fragmented nature of the fossil record. 
This next specimen represents a locality known as Sweet Home Petrified Forest and was found in a driftwood deposit on a private ranch. Here we can clearly see growth rings. Sweet Home Petrified Forest in Lynn County is part of a scattered tertiary deposits discovered at the eastern side of Williamente Valley in the state of Oregon. Around the Oligocene period to the late Miocene, let's say roughly 30 to 10 million years ago, the place was much closer to the ocean coast at that time and likely had a warmer climate. Regular fallouts of volcanic ash contributed to the creation of the petrified wood in this area. Over 50 species of trees have been identified among fossils found in the area, more specifically Marker Ranch, where some limited private digs happen and may still be possible by appointment. The microscopic structure of our piece corresponds to hardwood, but it's difficult to be more precise. It looks like it could be willow, buckeye, or even persimmon. In my opinion, it's the variety of species that are not commonly found in other localities that makes the Sweet Home Petrified Forest a special place. We have one more piece from the same area. Even though the microscopic structure is preserved only in a few spots, the growth rings are clearly visible. Thanks for watching! Give us a thumbs up to help the channel, but only if you like the video, and see you next time. By the way, we ended up spraying the unpolished Temsky fossil with a clear acrylic sealer, made to protect paintings. It was a bit of a desperate measure, but it did work to some extent. Bye-bye!